Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're going to be talking about how to build Tifa. A lot of you guys really requested this after my cloud build video. So I kind of implemented it, worked on it, gave it a couple days, and we finally got to the point where it's in a state to be released. Let's go ahead and dig in. <laughs> So with Tifa, you've got a couple different builds, and there's some gear that is non-negotiable. Uh, basically, Kazer Knuckle is the only fist weapon you're going to be able to use with her. Uh, I would definitely pursue the Kazer Knuckle. You could use, like, Mithril Claws if you wanted extra agility, but the power drop is so severe uh, between Kazer Knuckles and Mithril Claws, really just not worth it. Uh, there is another MR fist weapon called Cat Claws. Do not go for those. Just very similar to mithril claws just not worth it and the mithril claws are actually better than the cat claws uh, so just stay away from those stick to kaser knuckles and you're going to be fine uh, defense bracer of course if you do need disable resistance uh oldoa apron is really good because tifa has defense penetration buffing abilities as well as defense penetration in her mastery ability so if you do want to go the defense pen route with her uh could be very powerful and of course bells if you are going to be going for the brawler build could work too if you're going for evade you're going to need a couple more pieces of gear that are more limited uh ribbon would be great if you have that fully maxed out not everybody has that though so you could be looking at say sage's hat uh, personally, I'm a big fan of the more recently released TMR Sage's Barret, uh, which is going to come uh, from Luell. Uh, it's Luell's TMR, and it does boost luck by 35%. And since luck directly contributes to evasion, it is one of the best evasion buffing TMRs in the game. And I think it's going to be really powerful if used properly with Tifa, because she's going to be moving sideways to use this because it is an AoE buff. So she's going to want to buff her and one of her allies. And then she's probably going to get a second buff off before she engages the opponent. So she's going to have enough AP kind of survive to survive a couple turns um, without Bells or Oldo and Apron. So should be pretty good with that. Uh, in terms of Espers, uh, we have Odin, of course, universally good, universally great. Uh, Lamia Queen is a fire element Esper that doesn't have fire attack up. She actually has strike attack up in her kit, and she is probably the best, you know, quick and dirty strike Esper in the game. Now, you may want to, though, build Malboro Residence with Tifa. Because Malboro has access to the same amount of strike attack and wind attack that Lamia Queen would have, right? So they can contribute the same thing. However, Malboro also has access to initial AP up, which can be really powerful. And if you are eventually running multiple fist composition users, you're probably going to want to put Lamia Queen on another unit and then put Malboro on Tifa. Of course, Tetra Sylphid universally could work for you know tifa wind attack up evasion up but i think if you're running tifa you're probably going to be running her with other wind element units such as 2b that might benefit a little bit more from tetra sylphid than tifa uh, currently we do have some really good synergies uh in the game uh, for tifa so 2b is probably the best synergy uh halloween leela really great as well especially when her ex comes here in a couple of weeks halloween leela ex 2b and tifa I'm telling you, is going to be a team to be, you know, to mess with. Uh, Summer El Sorel actually is a really interesting choice, and so is Luel in this kind of mix here. Uh, any character with access to Scholar Sub, because there is an innate connection between Fist users and Scholars, because they do have access to the AoE Fist attack for um, draining HP, which Scholars do. So anything that can boost uh, Strike Attack for, say, Tifa... Uh, could buff, say, you know, Summer Elsorel in a way. So in some cases, you may not want to use Tifa's, you know, a Tower of Promise VC. You may want to use the Malboro VC because that's going to give strike attack up to everybody in the party if you are going more of a rainbow composition. For most people, though, the Tower of Promise VC is probably what they're going to set on Tifa. This is not bad. There's good evasion on it. There's HP on it, which is uh, kind of pivotal to survival. And I think with Tifa... The big thing with Tifa is you kind of want her to get to like turn three, turn four, 
especially if you're in like an arena or a GVG. And, you know, having that 10% HP could make the difference between doing that and not doing that. Uh, in addition to Halloween Leela EX coming out in the future, we also have Volush, we have uh, Jume who just came out on the JP side, and then we also have the Santa clothes that are coming out probably as we approach Christmas, which is going to give a whopping evasion plus 29, which is the best evasion piece of gear in the game. Hopefully we'll be getting that soon. Uh, I'm kind of excited for it. Uh, take a look at Tifa's stats. It is important to understand kind of where she falls in comparison to the other units here before we talk about specific builds for her uh, she's very similar to 2b and shadow links a lot of people think she's like the like next coming of jesus evasion unit she has good evasion she's not this incredible evasion god she has 262 luck versus 2b's 282 plus 10 evade right and versus shadow links is 293 plus 15 so she's no shadow links but she is gonna have enough luck to make a difference and where she kind of closes the gap here she has significantly more defense so she has nine defense opposed to shadow links is zero and 2b is four she has 68 agility which is two more agility than 2b um it's two more agility than shadow links she also has 3,500 HP, which is a little bit more than 2B, a lot more than Shadow Links. So she's kind of this hybrid unit where, yes, she's evasive, but she's also designed to take a hit or two. And I think those can be the most powerful type of evasion units, right? Because the problem with evasion units is a lot of the times they're glass cannon. They're going to get killed by like a holy or something from like Yuna. But with Tifa, she could take that holy and keep going, right? And the thing with Tifa is you want her to survive to use her limit break. Tifa is all about surviving uh, in order to kind of inflict kind of pain on your enemy. And I think that's what Tifa does really good. Another thing I think is interesting as well is how low Tifa's attack is compared to 2B and Shadowlinks. Shadowlinks actually has more attack than Tifa does. And 2B has, you know, 40 more attack than Tifa does and you would think it would be the other way around so lots of interesting things happening here uh, in Tifa's kit so how do you apply this how do you apply this information how do you build her well I think the most universal build is going to be probably a brawling build uh, that leans in a little bit on her evasion so evasion is not going to be the high point but it is going to be a component to her survivability uh, so how we're going to do that is we're going to be running Shadow Runner, and Shadow Runner is kind of her unique, not unique, but her number one passive that you're always going to have set. Agility 12%, luck 12%. Not only does that increase accuracy, it increases evasion, and it increases speed. Uh, speed is the name of the game. That's one of the things Tifa has working for her. You're always going to want to set that. Other than that, I would always set Holy Knight's Protection, an additional 12% HP and 12 defense. There are people out there who might want you to set, you know, uh, Shikuchi for more move and more jump. That could work, uh, depending on your situation. Uh, there's people out there who may want you to set, you know, Fist Attack up as well, which could work. It has acquired AP up. It's only uh, Strike Attack plus 12, though. However, I think, you know, when you're looking at Tifa, her most powerful ability is really going to be Overpower Plus, which moves her to the target unit panel. So Shikuchi is not really going to be a necessary requirement for her. Uh, Holy Knight's Protection gives her more capability to survive against Black Rose Helena and Dwayne, right? Uh, Paladin's Guard, going to chance to reduce physical damage by 20%, or 20% chance to proc, 45% um, chance to reduce physical damage, which is great. I think overall Tifa is really designed to survive those physical attacks if she does get hit and kind of push through a hit from Black Rose Helena is what I would try and do with her, right? Um, unyielding Stance, 200% uh, chance to ignore fatal damage to self. Very powerful. You're going to want to set that. And, you know, she has a lot of really good buffs in her kit. But do you always get to use the buffs that you need before you engage with your opponent? Most of the time, no. Um, I think you're going to be lucky enough to get unyielding stance off before your opponent is in range of Tifa to use overpower, uh, depending on the map. And so you're probably only going to get unyielding stance off unless you are pairing her 
with an AoE buffing TMR uh, like the uh, Barrette that I was just talking about from uh, Luel, uh, her TMR where it does increase luck. In that situation, you could maybe buff her luck because she's going to move sideways. She's not going to move towards the opponent. And then she'll move Immortal Spirit as she goes forward. So that could be where you kind of, you know, hit that hybrid build for her. Uh, she does have some buffs that increase defense penetration as well. So if you are taking her into some PvE content or, you know, if you're maybe going up against a lot of tanky opponents when Engelbert EX comes out potentially, uh, you could run the defense pen buff and use her as kind of this defense penetration blasting machine. I think the best way to use her though is going to be to get that unyielding stance on and then overpower directly into your opponent. Uh, decreasing the accuracy from overpower is going to be great uh, because that's going to give Tifa more survivability. Uh, if you consider that you're decreasing your opponent's accuracy by 25 when this hits, that's guaranteed, right? It's not a status ailment, it's guaranteed to hit. And it would basically make Tifa more evasive than 2B in certain situations. So very good and very powerful. Following that up, you want her to live until turn, like one turn after that, so that she can use Somersault Combo, which is a 45% chance to inflict stun for two turns. Now you may have to adjust her faith level a little bit higher, maybe to 70 instead of 51 in order to get this to be a close to 100% chance to land. Um, I haven't actually gotten her into the field yet. She's still 89 for me. So I haven't tested what faith level is gonna be best for her. Uh, I would say probably 70, just so that you're guaranteed to land this stun. And this stun, stunning an opponent for two turns, can be devastating, right? Like you could land this on any opponent. If it's not gonna kill them, stunning them will kind of like stop everything for your opponent. So very good, very powerful. Uh, I, you know, there are people who I've seen, you know, say this limit break is not that good. And I literally think they're crazy. Other than that, I would turn off most of her abilities, except for Whirling Uppercut Combo, uh, so that it's a 200% modified attack. If you are subbed um, as Tifa, if you are subbed um, her Final Fantasy VII Monk class, uh, you could turn on her 25% chance to stun attack that she has access to. I really don't think you're going to be using that as much as, say, Whirling Uppercut Combo, though, to kill the opponent. Now, there is another way to build Tifa, which we talked about, and that is really going to be around evasion. And pretty much the same thing goes here. Uh, literally, you're going to utilize the same strategy. Uh, the biggest thing is, though, you have access to a couple different subs and a couple different ways to take advantage of Tifa evade, right? Uh, you can kind of do the same strategy as we just talked about with her brawler mode, except that you have Sage's Barret on, so she's going to move to the side, buff the luck, and then buff on yielding stance and move forward so that's going to be a little bit less of an offensive tifa but she might go you know buff buff limit break as opposed to buff attack slash dash into the opponent limit break so there's kind of two different ways to think about this uh but i think you know this is probably going to be the preferred method is some hybrid setup of evasion and brawling with her there is one more form of her which i think is potentially a very bad idea and i would say this is probably the worst way to build your tifa but there could be different ways to do this uh where you do go sub paladin for taunting blade you utilize saintly wall uh, where maybe you have a 50 percent physical damage shield and then you utilize the producer's tie you utilize vow of love and put her as an evasion tank and when the producer's tie comes out that's going to be a really interesting piece of gear because it is going to increase luck quite significantly and it's going to increase hate on the individual unit so it's quite possible we could see evasion tank tifas paired with like two b's in the near future i think you know this is a build where you would kind of have to be a master level player to take advantage of this however this could be coming in the future taunting blade is a slash attack so you will get the modifiers from slash attack boosting uh vcs that you're setting so this could potentially be very damaging. You're just going to have to kind of, I would say, wait until the producer's tie comes out. You know, if you're feeling comfortable you're with your evade Tifa, maybe give this a try. Uh, you're really going to have to turn off a lot of abilities, though, and you're kind of just forcing her to taunting blade spam a lot. Um, anyway, everybody, I hope this video was everything you guys wanted. I know y'all were super excited 
about the Tifa building video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. If you wanted to see something else or something different, uh, I could definitely include that in my next build video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you do want to support me, uh, if you are pulling on Aerith or Barrett tonight, uh, make sure you use my affiliate link, dig.gs coins, and have a great rest of your day.